All right, so here's some help, some guidance with the end part of um, with the end part of the project, the compromise part and the protection part. So in class, we had a chance to talk about you know the scanning and the reconnaissance. Um, the compromise part, you're going to use Metasploit on any red vulnerabilities you found in the scanning part. Both of those ideas can be found in 325. So if you go back to 325 and you look at what we did for um, the compromise part, which is, see there's a red thing here. Um, there we go, compromise part. We used, once we found something red in our scan, ProFTP was the one we did in this one. When we found ProFTP, we could find out what um, what version it was and what its vulnerability actually was um, when we did our scan. And then we used this, this software called Metasploit to attack it. So we opened up a PowerShell window and, um, and did this stuff to attack. Now, you'll see the directions here are how to attack ProFTP. If you find a different vulnerability, you just won't search ProFTP. You're going to search whichever vulnerability you find. Okay? And then you should get to see a bunch of exploits. Now, this one told you which one to use. Um, let me jump back over here. Boom. Uh, it hasn't. Oh, well, there's a red one. Um, I'll look in a second if another one comes up. So, anyway. What you're going to put in here is the results of your Metasploit. Um, we're going to go in here, and you'll just start to follow the directions here. Um, MSFDB start, right, and then and we have uh, MSF console, all one word. It's still starting. Right, and then once it goes, it's going to load up. Um, it's going to load up Metasploit, which is this hacker tool to hack your own stuff to see <clears throat> if you can exploit the vulnerability. Um, let's see if it's shown up yet. Okay, so here's what we did for ProFTP. Now, what's cool is not only can you read what um, a hacker can do with this exploit, but it tells a solution aside from the other one we have. And if you scroll down, look at this. This even tells you it's exploitable with Metasploit Pro FTP 135 mod copy command execution. It tells you which one to search for. So when you go in here to Metasploit, which is open now, um, and you do the search Pro FTP, um, it's going to search for all exploits that it knows. And if you look at it, there's a bunch. Eh, it's not a bunch, right? There's not a ton here. Now, our lesson told us which one of these to use, right? If you go back to our lesson, they're like, hey, even though there's a bunch of them and we searched Pro FTP. Oh, I should have done Pro FTP D. Huh. I wonder if it found it anyway. Um, we just had to look for, here it is, 135, that was our version, mod copy command execution, which it told us in here. Okay, so if you see it in here, you aren't even guessing when you go over here. You can just, you know, go through the steps because it's like you got to do a little prep work where you say use the exploit, and then after you use the exploit, you had to set who the host was, who you're attacking and the site path. Okay, so that was a little more work because I don't think in here it tells you the site path to use. No, um, but a quick Google search could have told us uh, what site path to use on that. Anyway, um, so you can do that on any red one. So if you see any other red scans, you're going to kind of do the same thing, but instead of searching for ProFTPD, you're going to search for whatever. 
Um, so the trick is you're going to find one of them in that scan, right? You can't use this one because we use a different one, but you can do the same thing with this guy. And I think you can exploit it pretty easily. The difference is finding the second one. Now, <clears throat> if you are having trouble finding the second one, there are two good hints in here in the scanning part. This is in 326, number five. And if you read here, it tells you to look for the Apache server version um, and then look what that is and see if there's any uh, any vulnerabilities. So you can Google search, you could even try to search in here. Where's our Apache? Here we go. Here's the server version. Okay, I want to see what server version they have. What version are we running? Uh, 2.4.99 is the version we're running on port 80. Okay, so if in here I went to uh, search Apache. Oh, there's lots in here, right? Um, but if you can, if you can, geez, that's a lot. I wonder if there's a way we can get that uh, down less or maybe look at the version and see if we can uh, find something bad in there. That, that looks like too much. What do we have? Version 1.10 for the plugin. Um, or I could try, uh, I could try to, yeah, I could try to look that one up. Maybe I can look it up by that type. The 1.10 for our server version. This one has directory listing. Okay, so, but down here it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have an exploit available. It said exploited by Ness is true. Okay. Um, anyway, so that's one option. You can look into this, uh, look up the HTTP server version, <clears throat> see if you can um, find the vul vulnerability there. Um, but another option is to go in the Wayback Machine and remember what we did when, and it shows you a picture here. Here's your hint. You can browse straight to this. Um, you can browse right to the website. Okay, so another attack option is, let me bring up a new window, is to browse right to Pump PLC. <clears throat> and see in one of these if we can run one of our old hacks. And it was not by accident that I had you guys do the SQL injection ed puzzle. Um, you just need to go refresh your memory on how to do an SQL injection and find the right web page for it. You'll probably find it. Um, there's also another hack in here too. So you actually have three options, right? Um, and if you don't remember how to find the SQL injection, all you do is use the search here and type in SQL injection. And it'll take you to the section of, uh, oops, not that. Yeah, you can do exploits and, and refresh your memory on SQL injections and how to actually run one. And you'll see, um, you can refresh your brain on that too, because here it is. This is like our exploits. Okay. Anyway, um, so let's see. Anyway, that should help with, you know, finding the other ones. If you were struggling with finding your, your second vulnerability. So let's pretend you found your second vulnerability and you exploited it and you recorded all that stuff in here. Okay. Cause you're going to, you're going to, say here's what I did to exploit it, here's a screenshot showing I exploited it, that sort of thing. The last step is fixing it. Now granted, their fixes are sometimes pretty lame. Like if you jump back here, um, our fix for our fix for Pro FTP, which you're not allowed to use, was 
um, to upgrade it to this. Granted, that is a solution, but you want to fix it even better in that you don't want people to be able to hack it even if they could, which means you have to set up your IP tables on pump PLC so the only things it's getting is SSH from this guy, FTP from this guy, HTTP from both of these guys. If you can lock it down, then you don't have to worry as much. You're making them way more secure. And if you've forgotten how to do IP tables and set up firewalls on a Linux machine, that was in section 234. Okay, remember this? We did this lesson a while ago, way down near the bottom. Here we go. Um, actually, it's not even near the bottom. Yeah, here we go. Like around 16, you're going to start doing this stuff. Look at the current uh, IP tables. Take a picture of it. Flush them so you clean it. Um, <clears throat> you don't need to do this one because... Well, you do need to do something like it, but I don't want SSH just from anywhere. I want to control my source for SSH to just target Windows. So you're going to set up some IP tables. Um, look at them. This is a good one. I think this is still, yeah, this is still a good one. This is how you get FTP from the source of Pump Monitor. You're going to do a similar thing with HTTP. Okay? So... And that the, don't forget, the very last two moves you have to do after you set up all your IP tables is put in that drop and don't forget the save. And then you're going to list out your IP tables again and see what, what that you actually got it to set up just these four moves. Or maybe five if you do HTTPS, two, five or six. But still, those are the moves you got to do. Um, look back at 324. And then you can put your pictures in here of all the all the firewalls you put up. So hopefully that gets you on the right path. If you were stuck on the compromise part um, using Metasploit and this thing here, just remember you can't use the one we used for our last lesson. So you got to use a new one. And then finding any other stuff, you can find a couple more in here, or you can look up that stuff for Apache. Okay. All right. So hopefully. Um, after you explore this page a little you'll and look back at some hacks, you'll be able to do this. You can always email me if you have questions, and uh, I can help you out with specific questions. All right, I will talk to you later.